sorry. This is an image of the site plan. I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, what we had tried to accomplish in the site plan. Uh, this project offered an opportunity to create a pedestrian connection between the library and the elementary schools that support and encourage shared resources. By removing the 1985 connector building, it opened up the space between the town center and the school, schools, providing a more welcoming environment for everyone in the community. It honors the history and the heritage of Cape Elizabeth by retaining the Pond Cove Annex building and the front lawn area by, re by improving the landscaping for outdoor performances in front of the building facing Scott Dyer Road, where concerts and activities are regularly held during the summer. It restores and repurposes the Pond Cove Annex building and constructs a two-story addition that takes advantage of the south sloping site to create an at-gray daylight lower level for the children's area, complete with an outdoor play space and an outdoor reading garden. The two-story addition maximizes green space <coughs> while it minimizes the building footprint, exterior surface area, area, and thermal envelope. This reduces site costs and also energy consumption costs. The Spurring School remains available for other uses and serves as a temporary library during construction. We've expanded the parking, which complies with both the program needs and the planning board requirements. The parking has improved traffic flow, which makes it safer and more functional, and includes landscaped islands. The new drop-off area improves pedestrian safety, and new sidewalks expand the pedestrian connectivity with the town. This is a plan of the upper level, and um, it starts with an inviting at-grade entrance court and lobby, which provides elevator access to both the upper and the lower levels. Both levels conform to the requirements of the American with Disabilities Act and are completely handicapped accessible. A community information area, a digital bulletin board, and a donor wall are also included in the entrance lobby. The stair leads up to a centralized circulation desk, which is punctuated by a circular skylight. The north-south axis of the building is terminated on one end with a glassed-in stair that is incorporated into the existing Pond Cove Annex portico. This can be lit at night and act as a visual beacon for the library. The other end of the axis is a cozy reading area with comfortable seating. Adjacent to the circulation area is space for processing interlibrary loan materials and staff work areas and offices. Near the circulation area is adult media and new books. Ample space for computer users is also located at both sides of the circulation desk for assistance and visual control by the library staff. The young adult area will have its own identity but is located in close proximity to the circulation desk for st and staff for better control and supervision. Smaller study rooms and a media lab with glass walls are available for young adults and other patrons to work in groups. In the adult fiction area, there is open flexible space allowing for the rearrangement of functions and furnishings with minimal impact on the building and infrastructure. Study carrels and seating areas are along the windows overlooking a planted green roof and the children's garden below. Book stacks are located on the interior. The adult nonfiction and periodical area is located towards the front of the building and includes flexible space for both reading and studying. An inviting window seat is visible from the exterior entrance court. Show the window seat right there. This is the lower level. The stairs to the lower level lead to an inviting wood paneled gallery and lobby with cabinets and wall space for art displays. It can be accessible by the elevator as well. Off the gallery is an at grade daylight children's area with flexible space for reading and programs. 
including a space for the family place library. There's a circular window seat area for more intimate story time activities. The children's circulation desk has visual control over the children's area, the children's bathroom, adjacent gallery stairwell, and the entrance to the outdoor play space. The outdoor play space has activity areas for young children, gathering places under a covered porch, and seating for parents. During non-library hours, the children's room and the upper level are secured, allowing community members to use a variety of spaces. Students could use a lower level media lab after hours to make a movie for school on a Sunday night. The knitting club members could host an evening, pro evening meeting in program space number two, or a book club could have a reception in program space one and use the kitchen across the hall. The large dividable meeting room, program space number one, accommodates up to 130 people and has a storage space for chairs and tables adjacent. The existing floor structure in this area, area will be reworked to increase the ceiling height. Public bathrooms and the elevator are accessible to all during the non-library hours. There is an additional support space, such as the janitor's closet, server room, break room, and mechanical electrical rooms in the lower level. A new glass enclosed stairwell brings natural light into the lower level lobby and gallery and is another means of, of egress. This is a view approaching the library from Scott Dyer Road. The, com the completely renovated Han Cove School Annex building is on the right. A new drop-off area and covered entrance canopy are centrally located. The addition incorporates roof forms, materials, and proportions that are compatible with a historic Pond Cove school annex and conform to the town center design standards. The existing and new construction will incorporate sustainable design strategies, proven materials, equipment, and technologies that are durable, low maintenance, and energy efficient. The new reading garden and pathway to the lower level green spaces are framed by the new addition on the right and the historic Spurwing School on the left. This is a view standing in the north-south axis looking towards the circulation desk and glass stairway to Pond Cove Annex Portico. On the right is the entrance stair and the elevator. A circular skylight is a welcoming element in the center. This is the view of the lower level children's area looking toward the circular window seat and out to the garden and birdhouses. I don't know if you can see the birdhouses in this view, but they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, an undulating wood ceiling and wood ring panels highlight the small activity areas and reinforce the garden theme. In conclusion, we'd like to thank the Library Building Committee, which has led an intense process over the last year to learn the ways that the Cape community and the library currently work and understand the challenges of planning for the future. An important insight from this process is best summarized by a quote from a special issue on libraries and information by the Maine Policy Review. The quote begins, as libraries move into the future, we will continue to see a blend of the old and the new, end of quote. And although this, this quote is in reference to books and access to digital media and flexible space for new pr programming, we feel that it is it appropriate that the architecture of the new Thomas Memorial Library reflects and supports this blending of the old and new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.